Hello everyone, welcome to the video lecture on replacement theory part 2. In the previous video, we have discussed about replacement model 1, which is the replacement of items that deteriorate with time without considering time value of money. In that model, we have never considered the time value of money, but in practical situations, it is not at all possible because the 1 rupee value today will never be equal to the same after 10 years or before 10 years also. So, we have to consider the time value of money because we have to consider the interest rate, inflation rate, everything so that there will be a change in the value of money. So, here comes the in, uh, replacement model 2. In this video, we are going to uh, discuss about this model which is the replacement of items that deteriorate with time with considering time value of money. Here the time value of money is taken into consideration and here there is an assumption that is we are going to assume that the maintenance cost or the um, running cost or the summation of maintenance and operating cost will occur in the beginning of the different time periods that is at the beginning of every year it is occurring that is how we are going to assume it and we have, we have to calculate the present worth factor to determine the time value of money the other name given for this present worth factor is discount factor discount rate like this here comes the calculation of present worth factor or discount rate. Let me consider I as interest rate or inflation rate or sum of interest and inflation rate. So, a rupee invested now will be worth 1 plus I after a year, year. That is by taking the into consideration the inflation rate, interest rate, etc., it will be 1 plus i after a year. So, if you are investing 100 rupees now, if the interest rate is, interest rate, inflation rate or summation of all these things is 10%, so you will be getting 100 plus 10 as that is 110 rupees after a year. The same way, if it is after 2 years, it will be 1 plus i into 1 plus i. So, it is 1 plus i whole square after 2 years and so on. So, if a rupee invested today will be worth 1 plus i whole power n after n years. Right. You want to uh, make a payment of 1 rupee after n years. What is the equivalent value today? Yes, it is 1 plus i whole power minus n today. That is, you are going to pay 1 rupee after n years. So, you should know the present value of the same 1 rupee now. So, it is 1 plus i whole power minus n. That is, if you want to spend 10,000 rupees after 10 years for the running cost or the maintenance cost, the present value of that 10,000 rupees will be 10,000 plus i whole power minus 10 today. So, this quantity that is 1 plus i whole power n is called as present worth value of 1 rupee spent in n years time from now. For simplification, let me have let uh, 1 plus i whole power n factor is equal to v power minus n and this v is actually called as discount factor or present worth factor or discount rate which is equal to 1 plus i whole power minus 1. In other way, it is 1 by 1 plus i. 
now comes the replacement model 2. The aim here is the same as model 1 is to determine the optimum replacement age of an equipment item whose running or maintenance cost increases with time and the value of money remains dynamic during that period. Next comes the notations used. Here C is the capital cost of equipment. S is the scrap value or the resale value of the equipment. R is used for number of years that equipment would be in use and capital R small r capital R suffix r is for maintenance cost. We will discuss with an example for the model 2. Here there is a milk plant which is offered an equipment A which is priced at rupees 60,000 and the costs of operation and maintenance are estimated to be rupees 10,000 for each of the first five years, increasing every year by rupees 3,000 per year in the six and subsequent years. If money carries a rate of interest 10% per annum, what would be the optimal replacement period? Here, there is no fixed duration is given. The operation and maintenance cost is given as Rupees 10,000 for the first 5 years, then increasing every year by 3,000. Right? So, there is no fixed period is given. How do you calculate up to which year you have to do all the calculations? How do you determine it? So, for that, what we can do is we can just calculate the values of every values that is uh, we are going to uh, f determine the optimum replacement period uh, based on the weighted average annual cost so where it gives the lowest value and then increases we can just top it up to that year right okay before that uh, initially we have to calculate the discount factor or the present worth factor or the discount rate here the interest rate is given as 10 percent so, we know that discount rate is equal to, that is V is equal to 1 by 1 plus I. I is given as 10%, so it should be 0 0.10. So, it is 1 by 1.1, which is equal to 0 0.9091. After calculating this discount factor, we are going for the tabulation. So, as we already discussed, we are going to calculate year wise like this. Not column wise, we are going to calculate row wise. The first column uh, has uh, the number of years of service, 1, 2, 3 and so on. Next column is the running cost or the operating and maintenance cost which is given as RR. In the problem itself, it is given as 10,000 rupees for every 5 years. Then increasing by 3,000 every year from the 6th year and subsequent years. So it is 10,000 up to 5 years. Then 13,000, 16,000, 19,000, 22,000 and so on. Next comes the discounted factor. It is actually V power R minus 1. V already we have calculated which is 0 0.9091. Why we are taking it as V power R minus 1 is we are assuming that the running cost or the operating and maintenance cost is occurring at the starting of every year. So, for the first year, it should be the same. The discount factor should be 1. Then only the uh, value will be remains same. So, it is V power R minus 1. So, for the first year, it is V power 0. R minus 1 is 1 minus 1. For the second year, it is V power 2 minus 1. It is V power 1. For the third year, it is V power 2, V power 3, V power 4 and so on. Then after calculating the discounted factor, we have to calculate the discounted running cost. That means the present value of the running cost, which is RR into V power R minus 1, which is a multiplication of second column value and the third column value, which is 10,000 into 1 for the first year, 
10,000 into 0.9091 for the second year, 10,000 into 0.8264 for the third year and so on. Next comes the cumulative discounted running cost. That is cumulative present value of the running cost which is 10,000 for the first year. For the second year it is 10,000 plus 9091 which is 19,091. For the third year it is 19,091 plus 8264 which gives 27,355 and so on. Next comes the discounted total cost. Here there is no resale value given in the problem. So it is C plus the cumulative discounted running cost which is a summation of a capital investment which is 60,000 rupees plus the fifth column value. For the first year it is uh, 60,000 plus 10,000, 70,000. For the second year it is uh, 60,000 plus 19,091 which is 79,091 and so on. Next comes the cumulative discounted factor which is required for the calculation of weighted average annual cost. So we have already calculated the discounted factor here in the third uh, column. So here we have to calculate the cumulative discounted factor. So it is 1.00 for the first year. For the second year it is 1 plus 0.9091. It is 1.9091. It has been taken for the two decimal places. That's why it is 1.91. For the third year it is 1.91 plus 0.8264 which gives 2.74 and so on. We have to calculate it for all the years like this. Then comes the weighted average annual cost which is total discounted uh, discounted total cost divided by cumulative discounted factor. So it is 6th column divided by 7th column. It is wrongly given as plus so it should be divided by. So it is 6 divided by 7. 70,000 by 1 which is 70,000 uh, for the second it is 79,091 divided by 1.91 which is 41,428.42 the same way we have to calculate it for all the years so where we have to stop us where we get the minimum value and sudden increase in the weighted average annual cost we have to stop our calculation so from this uh, table the lowest uh, weighted annual average cost is this one so this occurs at the end of eighth year so the optimum replacement period for the particular machine or equipment is at the end of eighth year and the weighted average annual cost for the corresponding year is 21,905.89 this is how we have to calculate the optimum replacement values that is optimum replacement period and the weighted average annual cost accurately if you know the exact interest percentage or the inflation rate or the summation of interest and inflation rate. Next comes the tutorial problem. Here uh, a manufacturer is offered with two machines A and B. The data for uh, machine A and machine B are given and the money is worth 10% per year that is also given here. So you have to calculate the optimum replacement period and the annual average weighted average cost for machine A and machine B. After calculating these two, after calculating these two values and the optimum replacement period for both the machines and the weighted average annual cost, we have to choose the best machine based on what? Yes, it is based, it should be selected based on the weighted annual average cost. We will discuss uh, the third model in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.